Hi, welcome to Think for Yourself. This is an introduction to critical thinking. My name is Mark Thorsby, and in this video, we'll be talking about some of the core reasons and, and general principles that one should use if you want to think reasonably. Uh, we're follow, if you want to follow along, we're using this textbook here, A Workbook for Arguments by David Morrow and Anthony Weston. So welcome back, everyone. I hope you guys are doing well, and I hope you've enjoyed the series. Um, today, we're going to be beginning, we're going to begin our discussion on generalizations. As you know, this video series introduces three, introduces a rule in each video for thinking clearly about reasoning. We're going to see there's a whole, there's actually five different rules that we're going to be talking about um, throughout the next series of videos, next set of videos. On the one hand, when we talk about generalizations, um, we're going to be talking about how to make good generalizations, but also how to evaluate generalizations. We're going to see that there's both good and bad generalizations. Um, most of us are familiar what, with what a generalization is. As you can see, the root word for generalization is to generalize or to talk about that which is general to a specific category or topic. But let's see if we can fine tune that a little bit. So what is a generalization? Well, a sort of dictionary definition of a generalization is the idea that a, gener a generalization is a general statement or a concept obtained by inference from specific cases. Uh, so let's, let's take, break that down a little bit and see if we can um, clarify what a generalization is. The first thing we should know here is that a generalization is a form of inductive reasoning and it's a form of inference. So that means that generalizations fundamentally take up our, um, take up a form of argumentation where you, you're arguing for a specific conclusion, a specific claim, and the reasons you give for that claim are um, examples um, specific cases that you're trying to say apply to an entire category. You're trying to generalize characteristics of a specific case to an entire category. And this is inductive reasoning. Um, inductive reasoning is the reasoning we make by probability. Um, by contrast, there's what we call deductive reasoning. Deductive reasoning is the reasoning by necessity. So for instance, in mathematics, we have a reasoning by necessity. When we predict the weather, this is inductive, right? Um, because ultimately, uh, we don't know necessarily what the weather will be, but we can say that there's a certain probability of certain types of weather events occurring, for instance, if there's low pressure, storms come, and so on and so forth. So that means that a generalization is a form of inductive reasoning in which the attributes or characteristics from an individual member of that category gets applied, i.e. generalized, to the entire category as a whole. Generalizations are fundamentally analogical. They're types of analogies. What is an analogy? Well, an analogy is, that, is basically when we take characteristics between two things and then try to apply them to something else. So for instance, uh, by analogy, we can say that all students, all people who are students are people who are studying, right? Um, and that would be one way of thinking. You could say that, therefore, a school is made up of students, so a school must have all people in it who are studying, right? I'm trying to generalize in that sense. And you can see it's by the construction, fundamentally, of an analogy. Now, I want to lay out some important terms here that are helpful. In philosophy, we make this distinction between species and genus. The species, now most of you are probably familiar with this distinction because you've heard of it in biology or in, um, you know, biological taxonomy. Um, a genus is the big, large category, and the species are the instances or the members of a larger category. Um, so Homo sapien, right, for instance, sapien is a species, it's a member of the larger category, the larger genus of Homo, right? So Homo erectus, Homo sapien, both of those are members of the larger category of humanoid, actually, um, or, or hominid. Um, so, so what you might say here is that uh, a generalization works by taking char characteristics of the species, the members, or the parts, and then applies them to being characteristics of the genus, the entire genus, of the entire category, or of the whole thing. You can see here, this is, the, you can see 
here. This is how the basic function of a generalization works, and you can also see uh, how and in what ways we can make bad analogical arguments. For instance, some characteristics of the parts do not necessarily apply to the whole. For instance, think about your automobile. Um, we know that there's some parts of your automobile, your car, which are made of plastic. But you can't say that just because one part, let, let's say for instance, the dashboard is made of plastic, therefore the entire car is made of plastic. That may or may not be true. In fact, we know it's not true. The whole car is not made of plastic. It's also made of metal and other alloys. Um, so you can see here, you have to be careful when you try to apply the characteristics of a part to a whole. Now, by contrast, if we were going to um, swap this uh, and rotate around this arrow, what you can do is you can argue that the characteristics of the whole apply to the characteristics of the species. This is actually a movement of deduction because it follows necessarily that if you have a larger category that has a characteristic, all those members, all the species of that category will also have um, those, or at least to some degree, that characteristic. So really, when we talk about generalization, we're talking about parts and wholes, individuals and groups, and how we apply the characteristics or features of one to the whole. Now, we should know here that generalizations are really necessary for living in a world uh, where you have to make predictions and probabilities. Um, so generalizations are not bad. They tend to get a bad rap, uh, but we generalize all the time, right? So for instance, uh, let's say uh, if I have a, um, if a fire alarm goes off, for instance, from my experience, when a fire alarm goes off, um, it generally is because there's smoke in the air or the battery is broken, right? So you can see here that a good generalization would be say, well, if I'm at work and suddenly the fire alarm goes off, you could generalize and say, well, based upon my previous ex uh, experience of that member, right? When fire alarms go off, there's usually an emergency or there's something triggering it. And so therefore you could apply the same uh, argument to when I'm at work, or you could say, all fire alarms ultimately are warnings of fires. But you can also see how this same sort of reasoning can go awry or it can go wrong. For instance, I can also take certain characteristics. I could say, um, my fire alarm at home always goes off when, um, when someone's just cooking something in the toast, when, to when someone's toasting something, right? Therefore, while I'm at work, when the fire alarm goes off, it's probably just another toaster going, uh, making the thing go off. You can see that argument doesn't make sense. Uh, well, I'm rather, it makes sense, but it's a bad generalization. Because uh, I'm taking a really an accidental observation of a particular um, instance of fire alarms, and I'm applying it to the whole in a way that really doesn't make a lot of sense. Okay, so that's what a generalization is. So let's jump into rule seven. And we're gonna see, introduce really five sets of rules over the next five videos that are related to generalizations. The rule seven here is that you need to use more than one example. So when you're making a generalization, you should use multiple examples. Um, and also when you're critiquing, assessing, or analyzing someone else's generalized argument, you should look to see how many examples they're using. So to begin, when we give it a single example of something, that, mean, that example can function as an illustration. Now, you don't need more than an example if you're just giving an illustration. I'm sorry, you don't need more than one example if you're giving an illustration. So this is important to recognize the difference here between making an argument and, for instance, making an explanation and providing an illustration to make sense of your explanation. Now, generalizations, so illustrations can use one example, but a generalization is a, you, that only uses a single example is really a bad example. So for instance, compare this, this sort of example. H compare hamburgers are unhealthy, therefore fast food is unhealthy, right? Well, okay, you can see here that in a certain way, we all know that hamburgers are unhealthy, right? They're, they're fatty and so on and so forth. But that doesn't necessarily mean that all fast food is unhealthy. So in this example, they've taken one, why? Because not all fast food is made up of hamburgers, right? Taco Bell, you can think of tacos, 
Think of Chipotle. Think of a whole range of different restaurants that don't serve hamburgers. And even some fast food meals are in fact healthy, right? So for instance, if you eat a salad um, somewhere without the dressing, it's probably pretty healthy. Um, so, when we, so if you make the argument that fast food is unhealthy, you need more than one example. Now compare this example. Hamburgers are high in fat. Most fast food products are high in fat. And since a high, f high intake of fat is unhealthy, therefore fast food is unhealthy. Now you can see here, this is a better um, example because we have more examples that are being given. We have example of hamburgers. We have examples of fast food that are high in fat. We have examples of high fat intake as being unhealthy. So in fact, the second one is clearly a much stronger argument. Um, and in some ways, it's it, most of us probably wouldn't see it as a type of generalization. But strictly speaking, this fits our example because we're taking examples, um, specific examples, and then um, expanding outwards. So that's the first sort of thing to recognize here is that if we want to make good generalizations, we ultimately need to use multiple examples. Now, if we're using multiples, that means that we can talk about the sample size of an example that's given when we make a generalized claim. Uh, the sample size here just refers to, real simply, the idea, it refers to the individuals, quote unquote, the members, the examples, that are used to make the inductive claim about the general category. So a sample is just the example, the set of examples that you're giving. But you have to have, you have, to have multiple examples, uh, multiple examples, so you have to have a sample size of more than just one. So how are we to assess this? Well, in making good generalizations, we, we want to make sure that we have good, we have um, certain elements in our sample size. First off, it needs to be appropriate, and second, it needs to be representative. Now, we're in the next video, we're going to talk about the representative nature of making generalized claims. So we'll, we'll actually talk about that in our next video. But when we talk about appropriate size, it makes sense here. Um, in order for a sample size to be appropriate, right, it ultimately needs to be one which um, represents the entire category at large, right? So you're going to do an example. So if you're following along in the book, there's a set of exercises here that you're going to be working on. And the goal of these exercises will consist of you practicing um, finding the relevant appropriate examples to support different types of generalized claims or statements. So for instance, here's an example. Imagine if someone made the claim lots of professional sports teams are named after animals, right? Well, here, what you're gonna be doing in the example is you're gonna create your own generalized argument. So you're gonna make a generalization here um, and you're gonna do it to support this claim. Um, so for instance, you might say, um, the bears, the bears are named after an animal. Um, the uh, in for in, in football, the bears are named the the bears are a team that's named after an animal. In baseball, you could say the um, the Cardinals is another team that's named after an animal. And you can see here, if I go through and start giving multiple examples of different teams throughout, I could give an example of a soccer team, a basketball team. Once I start to do that, and you have enough size in my sample, that will function as an argument, a generalized argument for this claim. So that's what you're going to be doing in this exercise as you explore generalizations. Now remember, the core rule here is we need to use more than one example when we make generalizations and when we assess them we need to look to see that there are more than one example given if there's just one example given it's hard to know how which characteristics only apply to the individual versus the member category itself um, right the overall um, generalized statement okay thank you guys for watching online in our next video we're going to take a look at rule eight using representative examples. Thank you very much, and I'll see you guys online.